You're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. Life is good, but you, player, deserve something great. Follow Game On with Jackson Stewart on social media and get the latest advice, tips, and life hacks. Follow at Game On with Jack on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Lastly, hook yourself up with news you can use, interviews, posts, articles, and more on men's lifestyle, health, and success. See you at www.gameonwithjack.blog. Life's a game. Time to play. Time to win. Good people, sexy people, welcome to another edition of Game On with Jackson Stewart. I'm your host, and as always, I want to welcome you to the show where we delve deep into the heart of men's lifestyle topics, from fitness and fashion to relationships and personal growth. Tonight, we're embarking on a transformative journey. We're challenging the traditional notions of masculinity and exploring the crucial roles of vulnerability and emotional intelligence in modern men's lives. Always gonna invite you guys to follow Game On on social media, follow on YouTube, patreon.com, and Twitter, and Instagram, at Game On With Jack. The blog is gameonwithjack.blog, and swing by the gameonwithjack.shop, where you could jump over and log in for free to take the... Um, the uh, Game On with Jackson Stewart class, and also you get like a free download, all that good stuff. So, tons of reasons to follow, tons of reasons to um, to join the this players committee, right? To grow, to develop, and to help us all become better. So tonight's topic: modern masculinity, vulnerability, emotional intelligence, and strength. So. Like for how long, right? Forever, for generations, society has imposed this rigid definition of masculinity on us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Often equating it with stoicism, strength, um, emotional suppression. But times are are changing, right? We're not just these knuckle dragging cavemen who are, you know, grunting and hitting women in the head with clubs and all this kind of stuff. And so, two, right, must our understanding change of what it means to be a man, what it means to be masculine, all right? Because when we don't define it, society, the mob, <laughs> has a horrible habit of defining things in the negative, right? Being masculine, being a man will be another negative thing it'll be shown in a negative light it'll be discussed in a negative way we'll be seen as another aspect of unintelligent um you know uni emotional knuckle dragging aggressive woman haters and that that's not what being a man is about so tonight we'll explore why embracing vulnerability yes the v word and cultivating emotional intelligence can lead to a richer, more fulfilling life. All right. So, boom, let, let's dive in. So, first up, let's talk about understanding traditional masculinity. Historically, men have been expected to be providers, protectors, pillars of strength, right? The go to guy, dad, the man, whatever. And these roles have shaped societal expectations. They've created a framework where emotional expression is often seen as a sign of weakness. Guys, how many times, you know, have you seen your dad or your uncle or your older brother cry, comfortably cry or get emotional besides anger or laughter? Um, when was the last time you heard a man who you looked up to or who was older than you? Say that he was lonely. Uh, say that he was feeling weak. Think about the classic male heroes in movies and 
and in comic books and literature, what are they? They're stoic. They're unyielding. They're emotionally distant. Um, you know, they're they're the the cowboy that rides in, says six words, and has just as many bullets and rides back out. They're the the superhero that just uh nods to the to the crowd as they fly off and 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 fight the giant robot, whatever it is, our imaginary role models are fictitious depictions of masculinity are no more emotional than we are or comfortable with their emotions than we are. These archetypes have reinforced the idea that a real man doesn't show vulnerability. But what does this do to a man's mental health and personal relationships? What are we teaching our young men growing up about mental health and relationships? So suppressing emotions can lead to a host of problems. And keep in mind, guys, as I've said repeatedly, Jackson Stewart is not a therapist. Jackson Stewart is not a licensed social worker, but he is a man. He's been around and he knows what he's talking about. Um, so anyway, suppressing your emotions leads to problems like increased stress, depression, difficulty in forming meaningful connections, trust issues, um, irritability. All right. So the pressure to conform to these outdated norms can be overwhelming leaving many men feeling isolated and misunderstood because here's the kick guys, whether or not you admit that you feel vulnerable, you still feel vulnerable. You just don't say it. And so now you have a side of you that you are suppressing, that you are hiding, that you feel shamed about. And when you feel that way about a part of you, you build an inner conflict. You build a turmoil in your soul that is going to eventually have to come out. And it's not going to come out in a good way. Next up, let's talk about the importance of emotional intelligence. So EQ or emotional intelligence, I don't know why they where they get the Q from, uh, <laughs> is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions, as well as the emotions of others. It's a critical skill that can significantly impact our personal and professional lives. For men, developing a high EQ can be particularly transformative. It allows for better communication, deeper empathy, and more effective conflict resolution. In the workplace, Leaders with high emotional intelligence are often the most successful. They can navigate complex interpersonal dynamics, interpersonal, not interpersonal, interpersonal dynamics, and foster a positive work environment. These are people at work who, you know, you can put them in a room, nobody says a word, but they can read everybody. They know how to talk to everybody. They know that they can speak to this person in nonstop jokes and still get high productivity and connectivity out of this person. And they know over here, this person, it's just by the book. It's it's dry. It's strict communication. They know this person just needs a nod and a pat on the back, and they know exactly what to do for the rest of the week. They can manage their emotions as well as the emotions of others. They understand others' emotions, and they understand their own. In personal relationships, EQ can lead to a more meaningful connection with others. It enables men to express their feelings openly, to understand their partner's emotions, and to build stronger and more resilient relationships. These are guys who make for great friends, amazing lovers, um, outstanding family members, friends. They're the person that you always want to have at every event, even if they don't bring anything, even if they don't say anything, just having them present makes the situation better. They just exude a level of contemplation, understanding, introspection. And, you know, they, they just, they put a vibe on stuff where they feel like an emotional constant. They feel like a structure. It's hard to put into words, but you guys know the guys I'm talking about. You know the people you're talking about. Those are people who have high emotional intelligence, also known as EQ. 
So embracing vulnerability. I can hear you guys shiver at the thought, but vulnerability is often misunderstood as a weakness. But in reality, it's a profound strength. Because being vulnerable means opening up, sharing our fears, our insecurities, and our true selves with others. And when you are vulnerable, what's on the other side of your vulnerability is the real you. It's about being authentic and real, which lead to you feeling incredibly liberated. You're not hiding behind the machismo. You're not hiding behind the false bravado. You're not hiding behind the bullshit. You are strong enough to be gentle, strong enough to be vulnerable. Embracing vulnerability can break down the walls that traditional masculinity has built. It allows men to connect on a deeper level with themselves, right? The first relationship you should ever have, and then connect on a deeper level with others. When men share their struggles and emotions, it creates an environment of trust and mutual support. Think about the guys, the friends that you have that you just know have your back, that they know you have their back. I call them the 3AM guys. I got some guys I could call at 3AM and I say, hey, man, I need you. And they'll say, you know, give me 10 minutes. I'll be there. You know, do I need to bring a shovel? <laughs> and vice versa. They call me and, all right, let me wipe the boogies out of my eyes and I'm there. You don't just get there over like a couple of beers and talking about chicks and goofing off. You get there because you have shared some vulnerable shit. You guys have been through the mud together. The blood and the mud, they like to say. At some point, you have been vulnerable with one another. You have cried over a heartbreak. You've supported one another when somebody passed away or when a job got lost, when stress ate somebody up from the inside. You were there and they were able to talk to you. And that is about embracing vulnerability. So consider the impact of vulnerability in mental health. When men feel free, when men feel safe to express their emotions, they are more likely to seek help and support. Um, this can lead to a reduction in mental health issues like depression, anxiety, feeling overwhelmed, having to call off work or not deal with your family because you just can't fucking take it. It creates an environment of truly taking care of yourself right not just like oh i gotta i mean think how bad guys are about going to the doctor oh man i gotta go to the doctor and get a checkup and he's gonna stick some of my ass and grab my nuts whatever <laughs> some for some that's a good weekend um but there is a another level of fear of taking care of that extra level of ourselves and that's our mental health Mental health issues are often exacerbated by emotional suppression. Acting like stuff ain't getting to you. Acting like things aren't bothering you. Pushing stuff down deep. I'll tell you something, guys. And this, you can take this to the bank. This is as true as grass is green and water is wet. Emotions will not stay suppressed forever. That anger you're holding on to, that resentment, that fear, that shame, that anxiety, you might smile and laugh or nod your head and act like the world's all peachy and fine. But if something is bothering you, that shit will not rest forever. It is unstoppable. It is only a matter of time.
Think of your emotions, especially the emotions you're struggling with, like water. Forget fire, forget lightning, forget wind, hurricanes, whatever. The most destructive force on earth is water. Water made the Grand Canyon. Ask firefighters, what's the most destructive thing that they have access to, you know, next to fire? Water, because water gets everywhere. You know, fire, you could put in a room and, and snuff out the air, but water will find, you fill a room, room up with water, it's going to find every crack. It's going to find every seam that's a little loose. Water gets out. Those emotions that you're trying to push down deep and act like they don't exist, they're going to come out. Now, you want to be a real man? You get in front of those emotions, you tackle them, and you tame them. And you tame them by getting them out, by talking them out, by seeking therapy. All right? Emotional suppression is bullshit. It's a joke. It never existed. It never worked. You think about, oh, my granddad never said nothing to me. Your granddad's probably going behind his old house crying. You know, are those older generations, it was okay to lay hands on the missus and the kids. Like all that shit came out somewhere. You just don't know about it. So, you know, it's very important. And I've got some, some examples here about personal stories and insights. Um, from some, you know, some listeners who've, who've chimed in before, but so, and the names are fake, right? To protect the innocent, but like John, all right, John's a corporate executive who realized that his stoic demeanor was creating distance between him and his team. So by opening up about his own challenges and emotions, he found that his team responded with increased loyalty and productivity. His vulnerability fostered a culture of openness and trust within his organization. He didn't cry in front of everybody. He didn't have to tell him about, you know, his worst childhood fears, but he told him about his worries, his feelings about the project, his worries and his feelings about how they would be viewed. He got human with them. And that connected the team. Next example, we got a guy named David. David's a foster, um, a foster. David's a father who struggled with expressing his emotions to his kids. He grew up in a household where men were expected to be tough and unemotional. But by actively working on his own emotional intelligence, David learned to communicate more openly with his kids, creating a stronger, more supportive family dynamic. His willingness to show vulnerability has set a positive example for his children teaching them that it's okay to express their feelings. Last example, we got Mark, a man who battled depression for years in silence. Afraid of being judged, he kept his struggles hidden, adhering to that traditional notion, right, that men should be strong and self-reliant. It wasn't until he attended a men's support group that he found the courage to open up. Sharing his experiences with others who understood his pain was a turning point. And so Mark's story is a powerful reminder that vulnerability can be a lifeline, not just for others, but for those around us. So I really want to thank the guys that shared their stories. Um, you know, we kind of paraphrase them. I, I appreciate John, David and Mark. You guys know who you are for sharing your stories about emotional um, intelligence and vulnerability and masculinity. So how do we redefine masculinity in our lives? Here's some practical steps that embrace vulnerability and help develop emotional intelligence. Self-reflection. Take time to understand your own emotions. Reflect on how you feel in different situations and why. Journaling can be a helpful tool for this. You know, today this happened, I reacted this way, why? You're not gonna write down every emotion you felt because you feel a lot of emotions in one day. But the ones that stand out, the ones that really took, you know, the stage, put them in a journal. Practice active listening. When someone is speaking, really listen. Don't wait to talk. Pay attention to their words. Pay attention to their tone. Pay attention to their body language. Respond with empathy and understanding. Rephrase things so that you can ensure that your understanding is, is exact, is correct. And be open and receptive. Open up. 
Share your own feelings and experiences with trusted friends and family. Start small. You know, talk to just that, that one ride or die you got about how you feel about things. Gradually open up more as you feel comfortable. And you'd be surprised. The people that are really open to talk about shit, people... When you let your guard down, so many more people are going to let their guards down also. You know, and it's tough because a lot of guys, we feel like, man, if I'm vulnerable, they're going to get me and they're going to make fun of me. Nobody's going to get you. If they get you, fuck them. Tell them Jack said, fuck you. (laughs) But opening up can be a huge step towards connectivity. And once you connect with people, you connect with people and everything levels up productivity creativity trust development um your team congeals they become cohesive because you opened up seek support don't be afraid to seek professional help if you're struggling with your emotions talk to your insurance company about options talk to your jobs employee uh wellness plan Talk to your HR. Therapy can provide valuable tools and insights for managing emotional health. There is no need and there's no reason for you guys to be suffering in silence. That is bullshit. That is fake make-believe, you know, stiff upper lip. That's no more believable than the tooth fairy. Get your ass out there. Get some help. Educate yourself. Read books. Attend workshops. Listen to podcasts, besides mine, on emotional intelligence and vulnerability. The more you learn, the better equipped you'll be to embrace these concepts. Learning is half the battle, right? For those of you who grew up in the 80s. Um, Guys, I'm passionate about this because masculinity, that toxic masculinity, that knuckle-dragging, caveman, bullshit masculinity is more dangerous to men than anything else. Because it keeps us from being our true authentic selves and it keeps us in this little bubble of grunting and ignorance and stupidity. And when you step outside that bubble and you start to grow, you can literally have, be, do anything. Lastly, make sure you challenge stereotypes. Um, Speak out against traditional stereotypes of masculinity. Encourage others to embrace a more nuanced and compassionate understanding of what it means to be a man. You know, shit, if you want to take a ballet class,